Unending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, finds the sings. We thank you, we pray, oh God, that your word will fall on good hearts, and at the end we shall bear fruits in a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. This morning, we are looking at the topic, Paul's gratitude for God's mercy. Paul's gratitude for God's mercy. And we are taking our main text from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 to 17. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 to 17. Paul's gratitude for God's mercy. That's our main topic. And we'll look at the reasons or reasons for, God, uh, for Paul's gratitude. The first one is because he received mercy in his unbelief. Because he received mercy in his unbelief. And the second is because he received mercy to be an example of Jesus' perfect patience. The first one is because he received mercy in his unbelief. The second one is because he received mercy to be an example of Jesus' perfect patience. Amen. We'll quickly read our main text. 1 Timothy 1 verse 12 to 17. It says, I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. Sorry, the, the, the main text is 1 Timothy 1, verse 12 to 17. 1 Timothy 1, verse 12 to 17. It says, I thank him who has given me strength, from the ESV. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost, but I received mercy for this reason. That in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So as I mentioned from the beginning, we are looking at Paul's gratitude for mercy. And the book of First Timothy was written by Paul, Apostle Paul, to his son Timothy. Um, he was writing it to address some things that were happening in the church that Timothy was heading. That's the Ephesian church, yes. He was writing it to correct some doctrines. You know, people were going around spreading false doctrines. And he was writing it also to show him the order in worship, you know, how he should go about as a leader of the church, uh, how they should go about in worship and all that. 
Yes. And Paul, from the verse 14, Paul is writing about how he used to formally blaspheme the church, how he used to persecute the church, but the grace of God and the mercies of God has called him into his service. You know, Paul was um, even there when Stephen was being stoned. Yes, when Stephen was being stoned, Paul was standing there. It was at his feet that people removed their cloaks and all that and dropped. Yes, so Paul was standing there when Stephen was being stoned. He wrote letters he ordered for the persecution of the church and all that. So he looked back and then he, he sees that even after doing all this, even after doing all this, Christ still had mercy on me and called me to his service. There's this saying that Paul Lambantem, so I the kind for Paul didn't come early. But he wrote almost half of the books in the New Testament. Uh, so when he sees this, this, this great love that Christ bestowed on him, that from the things that he used to do, I mean, he didn't deserve to be even part of the church, not to talk of to be an apostle. Uh, there are many scriptures in his letters to the churches that you see he undermined himself. He says that he's not even worthy to be called an apostle. I mean, of the apostles, he's the least. Why? Because of the things that he has done in his past. And this morning, we are going to look at this as a form of gratitude from ourselves also. Learning from Paul, not to undermine the grace of God and the mercy of God that has been bestowed on us. You know, many a times, um, we thank God for so many things. Hey, but one thing that struck me when I was doing this was that if not for the salvation of God, I mean, if Jesus had not saved us from eternal destruction, there was no way we could have even stand before him to ask for things, you know. When we have this consciousness in our mind, we will not think that the, 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 the grace of God and the salvation that we have received is, is, is an entitlement, you know. It's, 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 it's perfect grace from God. It's perfect mercy from God. If we have this understanding that, hey, to be here today, I mean, if not for the grace of God, if not that God has saved you, would you have been here today? By now, only God knows where you would have been. So even the opportunity to stand before God and pray and say, God, I want this, you know, mostly we thank God when there's something that has, or something we believe is spectacular, you know. So if nothing has happened, then we, 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 oh God, why me? God, me too, I'm part of God. What's happening? God, this, this sister has received this. But one thing that should strike us every day, the moment those thoughts come to mind, just remember that, hey, now, who, who, who am I? Who am I? Somebody say, who am I? Who am I to even stand before God and say, why me? I mean, the privilege to even stand before him and say, why me? Is because he did something on the cross for us. And that should be the first thing that comes to our mind when we want to thank God for something. I mean, if you think there's nothing that God has done for you, aside he giving you life, is the fact that he came to die for you and he has given you eternal life. I mean, he has snatched you from the face of hell. He has snatched, if, if all of us were to die and come back like how some people have done, to see how hell is, then we'll, we'll, we'll be grateful to God for this. And that's what we see Paul doing. That, I mean, after persecuting the church, after ordering for the killings of the people of God, and still, still, Christ has come to save me. The last time, there was this video of some people who, you know, went to a Catholic church and then killed everybody inside. There are other instances that have happened. And I was just, you know, so I was just wondering, hey, so these people too, these people too, Christ died for them. Like, these people too, they are part. If today, today, the person says that God, I've come, I've surrendered. Like, I, I, I want to know you. Or the killing, the pep, pep, even if the, pep, the person killed the archbishop or the pope and comes to God and say, God, I surrender, I want to know you. God will just clean all that. And, and that's the, the, the kind of mercy that we have received from God. We want to be grateful for that, you know, not downplay it at all, not see it as, a, as a, 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 um, an entitlement. No, I mean, I've been saved. Ah, is that, ah, then, no, it is a very huge thing that we've received from God, and we want to be grateful. So the first point, before I come to the first point, let me uh, explain some words. Mercy, mercy, when you say mercy, mercy is compassion or leniency shown to, the, to another, especially an offender. 
It has special reference to God's act of forgiveness by means of atonement. So leniency shown to another, especially an offender. So maybe when you've done, for instance, you've done your friend something, and then the person, you know, decides that, oh, I mean, you is fine. Uh -huh. Maybe the person dashed you some money. Uh, you what was in a, oh, it's fine. You is fine. Uh, it's fine. Keep the money. It's fine. I don't want it. Or maybe you slapped someone. And the person said, okay, let me use you. The person slapped you huh, so that you will feel the pain. The person slapped you, and then you are like, oh, it's okay. Me, I won't slap you back. Uh -huh. that's, that's, that's mercy. So having leniency or compassion toward an offender, something like that. And then when we say grace, grace is that unmerited favor of God towards sinners, whereby for the sake of Christ has provided for their redemption. The unmerited favor of God towards sinners, whereby for the sake of Christ, has provided for their redemption. Amen. We'll go to our first point. Reasons why Paul was grat great grateful, sorry, reasons why Paul showed gratitude, or reasons why Paul was grateful for his salvation. The first one is because he received mercy in his unbelief. Because he received mercy in his unbelief. So verse 13 and 14 says, Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So Paul was very, very zealous, you know. It's not like Paul was a sinner. What Paul was doing by killing the church, he wasn't doing it as... I mentioned an armed robber who just entered the church to kill people. No. Paul was doing it because he thought that was the right thing. He, he, he conspired with the, those people, those people with the big, big hats on their heads, the Pharisees and those people who think that they are the righteous people. He conspired with them to kill Christians or to kill the followers of Christ because he believed that they were not doing the right thing. So it wasn't like he was uh, an armed robber or someone. No, he was a very devout man, a very zealous man for the law, and he thought he was doing the right thing. So after doing all this, we know the story of Paul where on the way to Damascus, uh, Christ encountered him and then asked him why he was persecuting him why he was doing all those, and Paul received this gift of eternal life, or Paul was snatched, or Paul was saved. So he's saying that he received mercy out of his unbelief, you know. He didn't know. He was acting ignorantly. He thought the law was all that was about for uh, righteous people. Okay? So he didn't know. But even in his unbelief, even in his ignorance, God still showed mercy to him. And when we see our lives, as I mentioned, we shouldn't downplay the salvation that we have received because um, looking at our past, it has been cleared, but sometimes it's just good to reflect and then know the position that you are in now and know how the salvation of God has come through for you. You know, with, with, with things that we have done in the past, sometimes or some, some of it were even done when we came to Christ. You know, when we came to Christ, when we, we came to, when we come to church, sometimes the things that we think about, about our friends, sometimes the, 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 the evil thoughts, sometimes the, 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 the bad things that we do, you know, let me take before Christ. Some of us, we, we've, we've, we've passed through um, so much, you know. For some of us, I'm, I'm some of us here and I'm some of us there. For some of us here, we were born into the church, so <laughs> we just went through the, the, the process and all that. But for some of us here, Charlie, we've done things. We've done things, you know, smoking. Some people, they've, 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 they've done a whole lot of things. But Paul is saying that even in his unbelief, even in his ignorance, even when he thought only the law was the right thing or only the law was the, the thing that would lead him to righteousness, even at that time, God still showed him mercy. When we look at Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says that, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So God didn't, or Christ didn't come and die for um, those who were already saved or those who thought they were righteous. No. He came to die for sinners. And even whilst we were still sinners, I mean, when Christ came to die, you and I were not there. We, 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 we were not there. But Today, we share in this great blessing of salvation in that while we were still sinners, Romans 3, 20 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned right from Adam. All men have sinned. And we are falling short or we had fallen short of the glory of God. But Christ came to die for us while we were still sinners. You know, there was a, 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 a grand plan, a, a grand plan from God right from creation 
to, 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 to bring his son or to cause Jesus to come to die for you and I. To die for you and I. Amen. If you have this mindset, you know, if, if, if we, we think back and we see that, hey, so, so even whilst I was still a sinner, Christ came to die for me. Even whilst I was still a sinner, God thought of me to, to make provision for my redemption, to make provision for my salvation. You would go on your knees and thank God. You not only thank God for um, the things that, you know, you prayed about and it, it, it happened. Hey, you, you, you thank God for salvation. I want us from now, from today, if we have a list of prayer topics, we want to add it. The first one, before you even thank God for life, thank God for salvation. That he came to die for you whilst you were still a sinner. He didn't come and die for you when he saw that your dad would be elder or pastor. No. He came to die for you while you were still a sinner. He came to die for you and you alone. And you want to have this consciousness of mind to thank him, to be grateful, to show gratitude. Amen. And when we look at the second point, it says, because he received mercy to be an example of Jesus' per perfect patience, right? From verse 16, it says, but I received mercy for this reason, that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. I repeat, but I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as a foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. Amen. Well, Paul is saying that if you look at me and you see how I used to uh, persecute the church and all that, how I was even standing there when Stephen was being stoned, how I, I, I was involved in killing the people of God and still... Christ was sitting there with a plan to save Paul, you know. He was sitting there, he was just looking at him. So these people that went to kill the Catholic people in, the, in their church, or if someone is to enter here right now and shoot all of us and kill of, all of us, uh, for all we know, God is sitting up there and he's seeing that this boy, because of how zealous he is, I would, I would, I would, or I have a plan of redemption for him. And Paul is saying that that is an example of Jesus' perfect patience. For some of us, as I mentioned, we've, we've roamed, we've gone all over the place, you know. We've done so many things. If, if we look at the fact that we are here today and we remember the things that we've done, then you say that, hey, then Jesus, Jesus, Jesus' long suffering and patience for the church or patience for the people that he's going to save is very great and is very huge because if he, he, he even me, you know, most of the times when we go out, today being Gospel Sunday, I want to go out and share the word with someone throughout the week at the workplace, in school, you know, that Jesus loves you. Most of the times you encounter someone, the, the person will be like, hey, are you sure? Me, I'm not part of This is your Jesus thing. Me, I'm not part. Uh -huh. People will tell me I'm not part. Why? Because they feel they've done so many things that renders them outside the, 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 the mercies of God. Uh -huh. But Paul is a, a, a perfect example a perfect example. After ourselves, we've come to believe this. After ourselves, we, we, we hold on to this truth that Christ has come to die for us. Then when we go outside, when we want to talk to people, you know, if, if they give excuses that, oh, me, me, I, I've done things though. I mean, I've killed people. I've done all that. Imagine this young man who went to kill the people. I always refer to him. If you meet such a person and you are speaking to the person, it will be very difficult for them to hear you. Because, I mean, sometimes ourselves, how we portray ourselves to his part, you know, you know, we portray ourselves some way, so they think that they can't fit in. But it's up to us to let them know that, no, you are part. In fact, you are the main reason. If it was only you who was on earth, Christ will still die for you. If he has done it for Paul, you refer them to Paul. That, you know what Paul did. You think that you've just entered a church and you've killed people. Paul did worse than you. But even him, God, God called him, not only by saving him, he even called him and appointed him into his service. And Paul wrote half or more than half of the New Testament. And we go with this word. We let people know the perfect patience that Christ has for the people who he is going to save. And I believe that these people are going to turn a listening ear to us if we go with this, you know, not going with condemnation. Already they feel judged. Already they feel condemned. Already they feel they are not part. Huh. But if it, it, it's up to us that when we go, we go with this, that Paul, 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 let them know what Paul has done. And then you let them know that, no, Paul even 
with, with all the things he did, was still saved into the fold of Christ. Amen. Well, these are the reasons why Paul is showing gratitude to God. And this morning, I want us to have this consciousness, you know, it's, it's, it's very serious. It's very serious how believers or Christians don't value the salvation that we have received. We don't value it. We don't, we don't hold it with much esteem. But Paul, along or every step of his journey, he remembers, you see, sometimes remembering or keeping in mind that I didn't deserve it, but Christ has died, has died for me, you know, I missed all the things we do. Even after we've believed in Christ, he's still having long suffering for the church. He's still, you know, wanting that we come to him and all that. If we have this consciousness in mind, we'll always be grateful to him. If things do not go well, we, 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 we even thank him for the salvation. If we do not receive what we, we, we ask for, that, that's just secondary matter, you know. If we had not been born again, we wouldn't have even had the opportunity to come before him and ask. That's one striking thing that came to mind. And I want you to also have it. Anytime you go to God to ask for something, you, 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 you let it strike you that if God had not saved me, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to even stand before him to ask for something. And, and, and worse off, to even complain that things are not going on for us. Let us have this mindset. Let us... Let us Go to God with grateful, gratefulness and a grateful heart. Let us show gratitude to him for this. Let us thank him that even whilst we were yesterday, he came to die for us. Today we are here amidst the saints to fellowship, dressed beautifully and looking very glorious. If it had not been for the grace of God, I tell you, we wouldn't have been here. We wouldn't have even known where we would have been, you know. It, it's, it's serious. It's serious. If you are living in a community where you see people doing all kinds of things, people doing all kinds of things on campus on Sunday, people don't go to church. Like, sometimes I'm like, hey, it's just grace. Oh. It's just grace to even have the mindset to go to church on Sunday. I tell you, it's just, it's just grace. So we want to have this mindset. We want to go to God with a grateful heart. We want to thank God that even amidst everything, He still has come to die for us. And we are grateful. This morning, this is the word of God to us, that we show gratitude for God's mercy, that we go to God with a thankful and a grateful heart. Today being Gospel Sunday, aside that we want to go out there and let someone also know that in their west and west of states, Christ still thinks about them and has the power to redeem them. Amen. Shall we pray? Still the song. No shadow you will light up, mountains you will climb up, coming after me. Oh, no wall you will kick down, light you will turn down, coming after me. Oh, no shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. received and it's the gift of salvation we've received the gift of salvation as, as, as a result we are thanking God if we are here and you don't know Christ um, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that you cannot thank God you know you cannot even go to him you cannot go before him you don't have
have the opportunity to be a son. Or let's say, you, you, you don't have the privilege or the right to stand before him as a son. To even thank him, not to talk of demand for things from him. So we want to call on you. We want to call on you. That if, if, if you do not know Christ, you know, you come to church. But you've not received Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You come to church. I mean, you've been coming to church all your life. But it's just because you were born into the church or something you don't understand. You don't. You you've not encountered Christ for yourself. This morning we call on you that 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 Christ is standing at your door. You know, Revelation 3:20 says, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock." That is not in reference to unbelievers. No, it was a letter to a church, a letter to the Laodicean church, and it's a letter to the church that if we have left Christ outside our hearts so even if you are in church even if you are here with us but Christ is standing outside your heart we want to give him the opportunity to come in and dine with you to come in and reform you to come in and refine you to come in and, and, and revive you we want to give you this opportunity this morning that you, 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 you also share in this blessing you also share in this blessing such that when we all raise our voices to thank God, then you also have the opportunity to thank Him with us. Why don't I just give you this opportunity? A few minutes more if you do not know Christ. Maybe you want to rededicate your life to Christ. You want to give your life to Christ. You've, you've already accepted Him, but you want to rededicate your life. The, the, the floor is open. No, this is a personal thing. This is a very, very personal thing. And... Um, when we are standing in front of God at the judgment day, it will be personal. So don't let anything prevent you. If you've not accepted Christ, today is the day you want to give your life to Christ. You want to give your life to Christ. You want to give your life to Christ. A few seconds more. If there's no one like that, we are still waiting a few seconds more. We are still waiting. If we are all saved, then it means that it's up to us to thank God for this salvation that we've received. It's, it's, it's nothing to downplay. It's nothing to, to, to just see as uh, one of those things. No, it's a very huge thing. I mean, he left the 99 to come and look for us, to bring us here today. If you are looking all glorious, want to thank God, want to thank God, we'll sing the song for the last time, then we, 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 we pray and then we are done. Oh, dear overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love. Oh, oh, it chases me down, I still love, oh, it's a night now. I'm holding everything, and I don't so much for today. We thank you for your word. Oh God, we thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for redeeming us from spiritual death and eternal destruction. Thank you for bringing us into your marvelous light out of the darkness that we were in. We thank you, oh God. We thank you. Not our beauty could have done this. Our riches could not have done this. Just by your grace and your mercy, and this morning we want to thank you. We thank you and we bless you. Amen.